Good morning, fellow colleagues, and welcome to our team's Lululemon case study video. The producers of this video include Michael, Alyssa, David, Samantha, and Christopher. We hope you enjoy. Thank you. We will start with Lululemon's history, development, and growth. Lululemon was founded by Dennis Chip Wilson in Vancouver, Canada in 1998. He started the company to provide individuals with functional, high-quality athletic apparel after realizing the transparency of some athletic pants. The company developed its own blend of nylon and lycra, which it named Luan, to accomplish this goal. Starting as a small shop within a yoga studio in 2000, Lululemon began sales of women's yoga apparel in 2001. The privately traded company quickly grew into popularity within Canada with less than 20 stores, but a $40 million value in 2005. The same year, CEO Chip Wilson sold 48% of the company to equity partners Advent International and Highland Capital Partners. Although he remained a leader of the brand, Wilson stepped down as CEO this year. Taking his place was Bob Meir, whose decision to bring in outsiders to form the upper management team sparked a cultural shift within the company. This shift started an organizational restructure which continued through Christine Day's promotion to CEO in 2008. When she took on the role, the company was now publicly traded and worth $350 million, running over 100 stores in both the U.S. and Canada. However, the same year, sales per foot dropped from $1,710 to 1451 from the previous year, related to inventory, real estate, and leadership team issues. Next up, we have Lululemon's strengths and weaknesses. Starting with the strengths. Lululemon is vertically structured, meaning different parts of the distribution process are consolidated. This is a strength which allows more control over their products. It also reduces costs associated with wholesale or retailers needing to purchase manufactured goods and marked up goods. These savings can then be invested into research and development instead. The organization does extensive research feedback collection and designing to develop their biggest strength, innovative technology within their apparel. It's a core goal to understand customers' desires and feedback is taken seriously and incorporated into their goods as soon as possible. Brand ambassadors bring in some of this feedback and are locally chosen fitness instructors who design, test, and organically market Lululemon's products. Stores can then customize neighborhoods' needs and desires to market to a larger population in that area. Another strength for Lulu was that 70% of their management positions are filled internally, engulfing them into the company's values and culture. Employees are given free training opportunities ranging from skills based to personal accountability and goal setting. Most noteworthy is the three-day landmark education offered after one year, which prepares employees for leadership and management, according to former CEO Chip Wilson. Lululemon's first weakness lies in their marketing toward a specific customer base, namely sophisticated, educated, higher-income, and athletic women. Brand recognition is a strength, but being known for a specific market limits expansion onto other demographics. Furthermore, the clothing and sizes are aimed at those with athletic builds and may not appeal to non-athletic body types as much. In fact, Chip Wilson addressed this in a controversial statement that every company need not cater to every shape and size of women. This statement was the first of several controversies and a weakness as it was portrayed as fat shaming by the media. More controversies include recalls of pants and bikini tops for being too sheer, a major weakness as the company was founded on avoiding that problem. More strengths and weaknesses will be discussed in the SWOT analysis. Now for the nature of the external environment surrounding the company. Outside of Lululemon, there is a large, loyal customer base. In addition, the brand is well recognized throughout the athleisure industry within the U.S. and Canada. This industry is a strong one, a lone star in a declining apparel industry. Everyone from Kanye to Stella McCartney has tried to get a piece of the ever-growing pie. This market saturation has not slowed growth, as Morgan Stanley predicts an up to $83 billion increase in sales by 2020 and a growth rate of over 30%. And now for Lululemon's SWOT analysis. The company's community ties and employee engagement were discussed earlier as strong points leading into their marketing strategies. Lulu capitalizes on the health craze and markets their products through brand ambassadors and word of mouth. Executives at Lulu don't believe in standard sales tactics, but rather that their educators, which is what employees are called, will provide consumers with knowledge of the product 
and it will sell itself. Clearly, their products do. In 2013, Lululemon had a gross annual profit of $840 million. Likely, this is because Lulu's products are different from competitors. There is a higher emphasis on quality and innovation, especially in regards to Luan fabric used. These qualities, along with their marketing strategies, is what facilitates the fierce loyalty from their customer base. The company's marketing strategies include the use of brand ambassadors and educators, but also include its restocking policy. Within stores, only one to two of each size is put on display, and it is not regularly restocked. This gives the illusion that it is either not being replenished or that the product is in high demand, both successfully increasing buyers' interests in the items. With three different CEOs throughout the span of the case study, leadership is one of Lululemon's biggest weaknesses. Strong, effective leaders offer consistency and help companies succeed. In addition, the cost of Lululemon's products is almost doubled out of its competitors. They do spend significant resources researching and developing their products to ensure highest possible quality, but not all consumers will recognize that. The high premium is further weakening the company when we look at inventory issues. Lulu has poor inventory management. Some of that is intentional, as described in their marketing strategies, but this negatively affects consumer relations, impacts sales, and displays that the company's growth outpaces its development. One final weakness in Lululemon is its brand perception which is one related to yoga apparel for athletic women. However, they also sell men's clothing, children's, other sports, and even casual wear. Areas of opportunity revolve around one thing, expansion. Lululemon has the potential to expand its retail stores, sales to other demographics, e-commerce, its products lines, and inventory. We'll discuss these areas later in our recommendations. A big threat to the Lululemon brand is again related to poor leadership as bringing in new leaders could be unsettling to loyal consumers, employees, and it threatens the company culture. This is especially true if the new leader disagrees with how the organization does things. Competitors are the next biggest threat, with lower prices and the potential to grow in quality and innovation. Lululemon could lag behind. And now for the company strategies of Lululemon. Customer relations is at the heart of Lulu's corporate strategy. Customers' desires, concerns, and feedback are all valued and embedded into the culture. Differential or niche corporate strategy is also present in Lululemon, with a goal of separating it from competitors. Company culture resonates from the mission manifesto and encourages employees to implement it into their lives. Lululemon is optimistic that this creates a definitive work culture. Lulu's business level strategy is to create a fun, healthy lifestyle while pricing products at a high premium. To do so, Lulu markets products to their target consumers, women interested in fitness. They have begun targeting men due to the increase in male participation in healthier lifestyles and potential gift-buying men. The entrepreneurial manager role is used in targeting these populations, as store managers are empowered to make calculated risks based on the community around them. There are no mistakes at Lululemon, only lessons to be learned. Lululemon has a functional organization structure allowing for the decentralization of decision-making. The head corporate office is called the Store Support Center, which demonstrates the emphasis on the stores. The decentralized structure matches the company's strategy as the people who execute the strategic plan are the front lines. The entrepreneurial manager role demonstrates this as well, knowing the guest gives the insight into what they want in a product. For this reason, Lululemon employees work on the floor at least once per week. The functional communication structure matches corporate strategy of customer relations. Feedback is a gift to Lululemon, and designers work to improve as soon as possible based off of it. Research and development into new products is indicative of niche strategy and that the company invests significant time and money into products that sell themselves. R&D also puts the organization above competitors and up to date on trends and technology. In 2013, Lululemon recalled 17% of women's pants due to sheerness, costing a whopping $67 million and affecting their public image. Then-CEO Christine Day resigned in June of the same year, creating a hole in leadership once again. Six months later, Chip Wilson resigned as a chairman and announced the new CEO, Laurent Potevin. Due to misconduct, Potevin resigned in February of this year, leaving Lululemon without a CEO yet again. This past May, storefronts expanded in several countries and corporate announced plans to open 15 to 20 new stores in Asia this year. 
Just this past month, a renovated storefront opened in Hong Kong, launching the Asian Fit line targeted to suit Asian body types. The company is expanding internationally and digitally as well. According to the May 2018 quarter one results, e-commerce increased by 20% this year. In addition, the brand has increased their sales in men's apparel with 30% of its new customers being male. In their current state, Lulu has shown rises in earnings and revenue six quarters in a row. Wall Street expects another 20% jump in profits by the end of the fiscal year. These increases come from improved designs, production, and supply chain systems. Lululemon's chief executives are Chairman Glenn Murphy and COO Stuart Hazelden, but the search for a new CEO is ongoing and promising. The company's loyal fan base remains intact and is believed to be the premier retailer positioned for success over a multi-year period. Lululemon will continue to strengthen and flourish with the focus on efficiency, customer engagement, and improved products. Our recommendations were made based on the case study but are still relevant to Lululemon today. The organization should focus on opportunities and threats, as we outline them in our SWOT analysis. We recommend an improvement in leadership off the bat. Lulu needs to seek out a level 5 leader and build a strong executive team. The company should continue to expand into international and digital markets and improve their men's and children's lines. In these new markets, Lulu must develop strategies to overcome their brand perception and increase their consumer base in those demographics. In their continued expansion, we recommend Lululemon create a diffusion line, a secondary line of more affordable clothing. This will reach out to the consumer base that is less eager to splurge on athletic clothes while allowing them decent quality as well. A diffusion line not only increases sales but also creates additional loyal customers and word of mouth marketing. From our team to yours, thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you.